1 says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take any credit for it. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that we have done. So none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Does having a present confidence and assurance of salvation, does that somehow make us more boastful? Of course it doesn't. On the contrary, if anything, it's going to make us more humble. It's going to make us more grateful. We know that it's not us. We know that we are inherently selfish, but the good news is that God loves us despite it. God loves us as we are today, and God has saved us when Jesus rose from the dead, and God is saving us by changing and transforming our thinking every single day. Now, I know that uh, no matter how clearly that it's presented, that there are still going to be people who feel the same way, that they are too bad for God. And all I can say about that is that that relates to feeling. And yet, what God invites us to is into belief. I know, too, that the devil desperately doesn't want us to hear what we're talking about today. And no doubt, the devil causes all kinds of distractions, whatever they might be, to take us away from this one central idea that God loves us just as we are. He knows, as we read before, that if people do discover this incredibly good news, that his power over them is broken. And so my belief is that the only way that you can enter into belief is by saying it out loud for yourself. When we say things out loud, we start to discover them for themselves and we, and we start to actually believe it to be so. So this morning I'm gonna invite you to do exactly that. There's no harm in doing this. We can all say it out loud. So we're gonna make some statements of belief. And I'd like to invite you to stand, stand up and that we can all say this together. The first one is in Ephesians 8 verse 2. And we have translated this into the first person because mo most of what is written is written about you but it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when it's about you it makes much more sense when it's about me so I'd like us all to read this together can we just go back to the previous slide before we come to that one Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 can we say it together God saved me by his grace when I believed. And I can't take any credit for this. It is a gift from God. Do you believe it to be so? Let's go to the next one. This is what it really means. Can we say this together? I am already saved because of God's great generosity. Because of God's gift, I am already saved. Is it true? The Bible says it's true. I am already saved. That's what Paul said. That's what the Bible indicates. Let's go and read the next one. 
Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. For I am God's masterpiece. He created me anew in Christ Jesus. So I can do the good things that he planned for me long ago. I am God's masterpiece. How many people truly believe that? Can we go to the next one? Let's say this together. I am God's masterpiece. God really actually likes me. God highly values me. Is it true? What is a masterpiece? A masterpiece is something of great value, isn't it? Something that the, the artist highly regards and spends a lot of time on. And God, of course, is the artist. God is the one who calls you his masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece. God really actually likes me. God highly values me. Is there anyone who wants to say how that makes you feel when you understand that you are God's masterpiece? How does that make you feel? Good. Yes, it does. It makes you feel good. It's a fantastic thing. Makes you feel, I heard someone say, beautiful. That's how God looks at you. Makes me feel good about God, too. That God likes me, even though I always don't like me. God values me, and it inspires me to value God much more. It also gives an incredible sense of gratitude and thankfulness towards God, doesn't it? God, you are the best. You are amazing. And you are incredibly generous, God. So we're going to finish off now. And this is a good time. We can stay standing and sing this uh, incredible old hymn, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved what? A wretch like me. And as we sing that song, I'd just like you to think about what God has said about you, that God loves you as you are, that you are God's masterpiece. And just respond to God, the incredible grace and generosity that he has given to every one of us.